Start walking your dog, bending your knees. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and I'm the yoga instructor for Nike over at Intersports Training. Today we'll be doing a short yoga session designed for training. This session is only 15 minutes long, so it's the perfect thing to do when you're either short on time or you want to start easy. We'll be stretching throughout the whole body, but put a little bit more focus on the bottom part of our body. Our glutes, our hip flexors, our quads, and our hamstrings. The reason for that is that when you think about it, uh, we really do spend most of our time either sitting or standing, or when we work out, we work on strengthening the bottom. So we don't really stretch it. Today, we will try to balance it out, do a bunch of yummy stretches, and hopefully feel awesome afterwards. What is really important to remember is that this is your practice. So please listen to your body, and if you feel like modifying some of the poses we're doing, uh, taking a break, taking it easy, please do so. This is your practice. You should feel awesome and enjoy it. We will need a yoga mat, and what is actually really helpful is a blanket. So we're gonna use that, I'll give you that option. Um, take a blanket if you want, if you feel like your hips are tight and roll it into a little roll. And we'll use that uh, in our first pose, the child's pose. So coming to the back of your mat, you'll bring your feet together, your knees come apart. And if you already feel like this is really challenging for the knees, for the hips, uh, take your blanket and place your blanket just above your heels to sit on it. You will take your hands in front of you, so either with or without the blanket, and then start walking your hands forward, maybe a little wiggling your hips side to side as you're walking your hands forward, extending your hands fully, arms as wide as the shoulders, your forehead comes down to the floor, and we'll spend a couple breaths in this pose, with each inhale, trying to create more space. With each exhale, trying to sink into the pose a little. So in this one, we are not really forcing our body to do anything. We are trying to ease and relax into the pose. With your next exhale, sending your hips perhaps a little closer to your heels. Sending your chest a little closer to the floor. Feeling a nice stretch around your hip area and maybe even around your shoulders and your upper back. Slowly coming onto your fingertips, your elbows lift off the floor, your arms are straight. You're just on your spider fingers, your fingertips. And as you exhale, start walking your hands over to the right. So now we're getting a stretch on the left side of our body. Breathe into your left side. Inhale. And with your exhale, maybe walk your hands a tiny bit more to the right. Take an inhale. And exhale. Inhale to start walking your hands back towards the center. And exhale, walk to the left side. So now we want to keep the arms still straight. Your ears are between your upper arms and you're breathing into the right side of your body. Get a nice side stretch here. Inhale. Exhale to maybe walk your hands a little bit more to the left. Breathe in. And out. Inhale to walk your hands back towards the center. And you're going to lift your hips up. If you were using a blanket, you can place your blanket to the side. And we'll again find our fingertips. So coming high to your fingertips, bringing your knees so that they are only hip width apart. I like to curl my toes under here. You will walk your hands forward, going into the puppy pose variation. Your ears are still between your upper arms, your elbows are straight, and you start doing little bounces. 
You keep bouncing up, down, up, down, up, down. And perhaps you start feeling a little stretch or more stretch around your shoulders. That's good. That's why we're doing this. So bouncing a little, keeping your muscles active as you're stretching them. For five, four, three, two, and one. Dropping your hands on the floor, so palms flat, elbows sink to the floor. You want to keep your elbows shoulder width apart. Sink your forehead down to the floor. And we'll stay here for two or three breaths. Still stretching the shoulders and the upper back. With your exhale, sending your chest a little closer to the floor. One more inhale. And exhale. Inhale to look forward. You're going to slide onto your belly. Bring your hands next to your chest. Point your toes. Press your legs against the floor. Roll your shoulders back. Squeeze your elbows in. Slowly start lifting your upper body off the floor. So this is the cobra pose. You want to use your hands a little. And you want to stay more on the floor. So we're not lifting all the way up. We want to keep the belly button on the floor. Roll the shoulders back. Drag your hands back energetically so that the chest comes more forward. Stretch your neck. Holding and breathing here. For three, also engaging the back muscles a little to balance out all the core work. Two, and one, releasing back to the floor. You're going to curl your toes under, lift your knees off the floor, engaging your legs, engaging your belly to lift your belly off the floor, and with your inhale, pressing against the floor, coming into a plank. If this feels too intense, you can always drop your knees down to the floor to modify. Otherwise, keeping your knees off the floor, we're going to shift the shoulders over the fingertips and then press into the fingertips to shift back. So keep shifting forward and back. Keep the whole body strong, your legs are strong, your core is engaged, you're pushing out through your arms. Coming forward one more time. Now press into your fingertips and hold for three, two, and one. Shoot your hips up, press with your arms forward, coming into your downward facing dog. Start walking your dog, bending your knees, right knee, left knee, left knee, right knee. Stretching through your Achilles, your calves, the backs of your knees, your hamstrings, your glutes, your back. Getting a full back body stretch. And then you're gonna bring your feet together and lift your right leg up. Bend your right knee, open your right hip. So you wanna to try to make your knee point direction ceiling. Your right heel is squeezing to your glute. And then you can either stay here or start circling with your knee in the air. So doing a couple circles in one direction, a couple circles in the other direction. Just moving into the hip area a little. And then you extend your right leg. Exhale to bring your right knee towards your right shoulder as you step your right foot on the outer edge of your right hand, dropping your left knee down. So your right foot should be in one line with your hands. If you need to use your hands to put it more forward, put it a little more forward. And then we're going to find a nice 90 degree angle in the right ankle. Keep your 90 degrees. Make sure there's no sickening in the ankle. And then you take your right hand and press against your thigh. 
So you start feeling in your right outer hip, also in your left hip flexors, lift the left quads, using your right hand to press to the outside, keep your chest open. So you're also pushing through your left arm. You can look slightly up towards the ceiling and hold here for a moment. Taking one or two more breaths here. Deep inhale in. Full exhale out. Inhale to come back to the center. Walk your right foot to the center so that your right foot is pointing forward. Step your left foot in a little. So it's a little step forward. And now your right foot is looking forward and your left foot is turned slightly to the outside. So not too much. And you want to press into the outer edge of your left foot. Your right knee is bent, chest on your right knee. With your exhale, you're going to extend your right leg as much as you can without removing your chest from the thigh. So perhaps we'll stay here. Maybe you will extend it a little more. Remember your body, your practice. So modify, adjust, make it yours. You can move your hands more forward if you want. Finding an extension through the spine, keeping the legs active. Holding for three, two, and one. As a bonus, you can try to come to your left tippy toes to bring a little more weight forward. And then release your left heel back down. Press with your hands against the floor and step your right foot back. So returning to your downward facing dog, you will lift your left leg up. Bend your left knee, open your left hip, squeeze your left heel towards your glutes, and then either stay here or circle with your left knee in the air. A couple of times in one direction, in the other direction, moving into the left hip. And then extending your left leg behind you, Exhale to bring your left knee towards your left shoulder and step with your left foot on the outside of your left hand, dropping your right knee down. Again, finding that 90 degree angle in your left ankle, using your left hand to press against your left thigh. Push with your right hand against the floor to keep your chest open. Couple breaths here. You want to keep gently pressing with your left hand against your leg. And again, feeling it in your left outer hip and the front of your right thigh, right hip flexors. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Returning back towards the center. Now we want your left foot to point forward. Step your right foot in a little. Again, having your right foot turned out a little bit, pressing into the outer edge of your right foot. Bend your left knee, glue your chest to your knee, and then as you exhale, begin extending your left leg. Still remembering that your body means your practice, so take it easy or not, <laughs> as you want. Make sure to modify if you want to. You can walk your hands forward. We want to keep the hips in one line, which can be a little tricky. So I like to bring my hand on my lower back every now and then to make sure that the alignment is correct. Keeping your legs engaged, taking one more deep breath in. And out. Coming to your right tippy toes, just for one moment, shifting your weight a little more forward. And then releasing your right heel back down. Start walking your hands to the right. 
So we're coming now into a wide-legged stance. Both feet are in one line, both toe, toes are turned a little to the inside. You can again bend your knees as much as you need to and place your hands on the floor, either in front of you or if it's available, in one line with your feet. Relax your neck, shift your weight forward and you want to engage the glutes here. Engage the glutes, engage the whole body and try to reach down through the crown of your head. Holding, not forgetting to shift the weight forward. For two more breaths, inhale. Exhale, try to engage your thighs. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale to look forward. You will start walking your feet together. Sink your hips down. Connect your feet. Open your knees like a book. If your sits bones, uh, if, you're, if you cannot sit on the top of your sits bones or your back is rounding, then you can again take your blanket and place a blanket underneath your sits bones and maybe your feet a little more forward. In this pose, we want to focus on opening the hips so the thigh should go away from you rather than to the inside. Yeah, so to the outside, you can take both hands and move your both thighs a little to the outside and then work on keeping the spine nice and long, either being here or if you're without the blanket, you can also walk your hands forward. I will leave you with this pose, Supta Baddha Konasana. You can stay there as long as you want to, so if it allows uh, three or four more minutes. I will thank you for joining me on this practice. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them into the comment section. I will be happy to hear from you. And yeah, have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.